Okay, next we have uh, we have a change in the program um, re replacement speaker, and her name is Hillary Lister, and she's going to speak to you about uh, some of the house bills that are coming up. Hi there, and thank you, Amy, for helping coordinate this. It's good to see everyone out here. It's, I think, the last time I was here, there was about four years ago when LePage was running for office. We had a really good turnout for the tax day event here. So I just wanted to update on a few bills that a lot of people here I've seen around the State House and been following. Um, the state's looking at a lot of bills around trying to get under control the endless expansion of government telling people what they can do with their land. Um, there what, there's one bill that was put in by Representative Ricky Long around banning the use of Agenda 21 by town governments here in Maine and by the state. That bill had a packed public hearing at the State House uh, several weeks ago. Since that time, unfortunately, the Judiciary Committee has pretty well killed, well, tried to kill that bill. They ended up having a majority recommendation for a resolution on Agenda 21 that does not actually mention Agenda 21. But there's a minority report that's, being, that's going to be going to the House for a floor debate. And that's something people should really keep an eye on. Um, Ricky Long is still supporting this bill. Almost every representative, if not every representative from Aristic County is signed on to this bill. So I would just recommend people get in touch with your representatives, especially if they might be at all supportive of this, and really push for there to be a good debate on this on the floor of the House when it does come up for a vote. There's also a couple events coming up, uh, informational events about Agenda 21. One is tonight at 7 o'clock at the Curtis Memorial Library in Brunswick. And then also on Tuesday, April 30th at the Winter Harbor Lodge in Winter Harbor. Um, the same day as the Agenda 21 bill, there were three hearings on bills dealing with the use and abuse of eminent domain to take people's land. The Judiciary Committee, again, really opposed those bills, and every two of them have been killed. One of them has been tabled with a similar recommendation to have a the House adopt a resolution that doesn't actually have any teeth on that. This is a year following New Hampshire greatly strengthening their laws around eminent domain. New Hampshire has now made it law that eminent domain cannot be used for private utility corridors that developers cannot threaten the use of eminent domain unless it's been authorized the state by the state, and that surveyors for utility corridors cannot come onto people's lands without at least a month's advance landowner notice. And a lot of the need for these bills around eminent domain has come from the fact that Maine is being targeted for some of the largest industrial wind developments in the Northeast right now. Um, LePage just mentioned in his speech at the tax event yesterday how much this is costing Maine taxpayers and really goes against the sort of the intent of most of the laws that we have in the state around encouraging in affordable electricity, local electricity, and saving taxpayer dollars. But right now we're still dealing with the leftovers of the Baldacci administration and one of the biggest leftovers was the expedited wind zones which put a third of the unorganized territories in an expedited permitting area completely removing the people and landowners who are in that area ability to have any oversight over the siting of these projects. Right now in Somerset and Piscataquis County, First Wind is about to apply for expedited permitting for a corridor that would be the largest in New England. It would run from Bingham all the way across to Monson. And there's going to be a public hearing on this on its LD 1323, an act regarding wind power siting in the unorganized territories happening on Monday the 22nd at 1 p.m. right here in the State House in the Cross Building before the Natural Resources Committee. This bill would remove those towns that were forced into the expedited wind zones with no voice in that decision in the first place. It would restore their ability to have a say in these developments the same as people in any other town that has the ability to make local ordinances. So it's very important that people, if you can make it out on Monday, the hearing starts at 1 p.m., but it's one of five bills, so it could 
run anywhere as late as 7.30 or 8 as we saw with the hearings on the firearms bills this last week. That same day on the 22nd, before the same committee, the Natural Resources Committee, there's also a bill on LD 1363, an act to ensure landfill capacity and promote recycling in Maine. That bill is also sort of a cleanup bill for the mess left by the Baldacci administration. Under the Baldacci administration, there were two major changes to Maine's waste law. One was that la energy from landfill gas became defined as renewable energy and is now subsidized by every ratepayer's electric bill. Um, that he also, in his time in office, one of his first acts was to create a state-owned landfill up in Old Town, Juniper Ridge Landfill, and then contract out the operations of that dump to one of his larger donors, Casella Waste Systems. They had promised the people of Maine this landfill would be for Maine waste, so we wouldn't have to keep paying to permit new landfills. And within a year after that being approved, the definition of waste, Maine waste was changed so that now Maine waste includes any out-of-state waste that is processed in Maine. And fortunately, Casella Waste Systems owns almost all of the processing facilities in the state, so they are able to legally turn out-of-state waste into Maine waste. And as a result, the Old Town dump is now being filled very rapidly with state waste from around the Northeast and from uh, medical waste from Canada as well. A lot of this waste isn't allowed in the landfills of the surrounding states, but unfortunately in Maine it's allowed, it's subsidized, and also another change un came under Baldacci was that all towns in Maine lost their home rule authority over waste facilities. Pretty much every other state in the Northeast towns have the ability to control the operation of waste facilities within their borders. Maine lost this power soon after these other changes went into effect. So this bill would define waste, Maine waste honestly as waste generated in Maine, require information on the source and amount of out-of-state waste that's coming in before the state-owned dump in Old Town is permitted to expand, and it would return home rule authority to the towns to regulate these facilities and control what's being done in their borders. Um, in addition, there's all sorts of more bills that are pretty important going on in the State House. I try and track these bills and maintain a mailing list and blogs around this. If anyone would like to receive updates, uh, you can give me your email address. I'll add you to the list and would be glad to give you more information on the hearings as well as uh, flyers. And great to see everyone out today. And thank you very much. Hey! 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 Thank you, Hillary.